Hi there, good evening and welcome back to Bookmark and this is week four. The first three weeks have been about biblical material but tonight we're going to change the genre, the type altogether and we're going to indulge in a little bit of fun. And the book that I've selected tonight is a book called The Mystery of Castle Mac Gorilla which is written by father and son, the Hart family and I'm going to say a wee bit more about them in a minute but it's basically a, a, a story written for children but it's written at a level that adults could enjoy it too. A wee bit like The Simpsons, which has got a level of children's humour, but also it's got a level of more mature adult humour too. So it blends those two uh, age categories together marvellously well. Let me just say a little bit about the book. Uh, this is from the inside. It says, Any resemblance between the characters in this book and a collection of soft toys who live in a closet in the Hart household or a dog generally found lying about somewhere in that same household is entirely intentional. Permission was obtained from all the parties concerned. So you can get a flavour of the fun and the tongue in cheek. Uh, it's really good and I would highly recommend it. And here it says at the back, at the time of this book's writing, David Bentley Hart was 45 years old and Patrick Robert Hart was 11. One of the two authors is the, is the other's father and one is the other's son but you must guess which is which. Both are older now. One has grown wiser, the other has gone bald. And it's also illustrated by a man called Jerome Atherholt, who has got lovely illustrations inside. It's basically a combination of various uh, different sort of literary types. Uh, if I can put it this way, it's a wee bit like if you were to combine and put together all the ingredients into a big pot of stew, it's like something like The Wind in the Willows, a wee bit like Winnie the Pooh, adding a wee bit of Paddington Bear, adding in The Land, the Witch and the Wardrobe, adding in something like The Marx Brothers, Alice in Wonderland, Toy Story and all your favourite Disney films. It's, it's aimed at children, but it's also aimed for adults. A family can sit down and read and enjoy this together. Uh, it's It's got a lot of fun. The characters are wonderful. Uh, but th there's also a lovely serious message that comes through. It's not too heavy. It's lightly done, but it's absolutely beautifully done. And it speaks about how you address uh, relationships that get into a bit of trouble uh, because there's a crime committed uh, in, in the castle where everyone is snowbound for, for a few days. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the plot and the story, but there's a crime committed not a, 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 a terrible, grotesque, like a murder crime in Agatha Christie, uh, but it's, it's a wee bit like how solve someone, they try to solve a mystery and how they solve a crime that has been committed and how they come to some resolution on that. And it has a delightful message about forgiveness and restoration. It, it really teaches that well, but in such a light manner that you kind of just swallow it whole. Um, spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. It's, it's quite wonderful. But when I say that it's got all those ingredients, a wee bit of like uh, the wind in the willows, for instance, and, and those other characters, because it's about animals that all come together in this castle in the highlands of Scotland. That's not to say that the hearts are derivative of all those influences that I spoke about. Uh, it is unique. It's distinct. Uh, they've got their own particular way of, of, of writing. Uh, and, and the son, Patrick, has obviously contributed certain things, but it's his dad who's the driver of the narrative. And David Bentley Hart is probably the cleverest man I've ever come across as a writer. He's a scholar of religion, a theologian. He's translated the New Testament from Greek into English. Uh, as a philosopher, a theologian uh, and a fiction writer, he, he's just top of the tree. He's, he's wonderful, but this time he pitches it at a level that children and adults and all of us can thoroughly enjoy. So I'm going to basically tell you a little bit about the characters. They've got a bit of caricature to them, but they're wonderfully illustrated. Uh, sorry, they're illustrated in the book by, by the drawings, but they're, it, it's how he illustrates the characteristics of these characters. There's a bit of caricature, but they're beautifully described and, and the dialogue between the participants is just wonderful. 
basically a collection of friends, some of whom had gone to school in New York at the Advanced Academy of Soft Toys in New York City, come together to meet the owner of Gorilla of Gorilla Mac Gorilla Castle. Uh, he's he's a gorilla, obviously, and he's inherited this um, castle in the Highlands from his uncle, who has left to go to a new place in the Isle of Man. A lot of it's tongue in cheek, but it's it's delightful and it's wonderful. And Gorilla Mac Gorilla, who is the lord of the castle in the Scottish Highlands, set about the mid twentieth century, is one of the most wonderful characters you'll ever find in English literature. Uh, he is completely and utterly innocent. There's no guy. There's no back doors. He's a completely open book. Um, he he's daft and silly in many ways, but he is the most adorable character. Um, read the book, and you'll find out exactly what I mean. But he invites some friends of his, all animals, all soft toys, to come and to stay with him for a few days. And the characters are. Theodore Bear, or Teddy as he's called, who is from New York City and is a retired detective. Porcelain of Pig, who is a food addict. She comes from London. She's the co-owner of a company called Fluffy and Painted in Inclusive. Uh, it's, it makes cosmetics for soft toys. She's a character. Rolanda's dog is the butler and chauffeur. He's got an Oxbury accent. And he's a bit like John Gielgud in the film Arthur that starred Dudley Moore. He's got that dry wit and is very capable, um, a lovely character, based on the Hart family dog at home. Blue Bunny, who's the groundkeeper, he's a very nervous type, and he's the one who looks after the grounds and estate at Mark Gorilla Estate in the Scottish Highlands. Ribbit and Jumping Bean, uh, Mac 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 Amphibians are frogs. They're friends of Gorilla. And they also are the owners of uh, the pest control service that catches flies and bugs and keeps all those insects down. You've got Miss Raquel de, de Raccooning, or Miss Raccoon as she's called. She's a gorgeous, celebrated movie star, and she's an outrageous flirt. You've got Panda, who's the chef. You've got his wife, Pandas, who's the cook and housekeeper. And you've got their son, Pandulus. Obviously, they're a son. You've got Alistair McCaw, who's a parrot. He's a distinguished painter and art critic. And then you've got Connell McCuttles, or Cuttles as he's called, who's a squid. He's a playwright and a poet. He's sad and gloomy and so pessimistically over the top, full of woe and tragedy. Um, they're all wonderful characters. And I'm just painting very briefly a little character sketch of what they're like. Um, it revolves around going to the house and then they find themselves snowed in. A crime takes place and they have to try and solve and resolve it. And all the characters contribute their own particular ways of being and speaking and interacting, which is hilarious. Um, but there's a serious undertow and a serious point. And, and when you read the book, the seriousness uh, is woven into, very lightly woven into the characters, their dialogue, their caricatures, uh, their interactions, um, it, it's 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 lovely. Uh, so I can't recommend it highly enough. It would make an ideal present for a Christmas present, although obviously that's gone. Um, we've just had some snow. It would have been great to sort of sit down, snuggle, and read this uh, in this when it's cold and icy and snowy outside. But you could read it any time of the year you wanted. But uh, atmospherically, it suits uh, some warm warm nights in when it's cold outside. And, and I'm told that the hearts, uh, though they're, you know, the son's obviously grown up as an, an adult now in his 20s. His father's still a very distinguished academic and scholar and writer. I, I'm told that there may be a follow up. Um, I'm not sure if it's got the same characters, but probably something like the same feel and style. And this time it's not set in a Scottish castle in the Highlands. This time it's going to be set, I think, in a vineyard in the south of France. So the book again that I recommend is The Mystery of Castle Mac Gorilla. It came out in 2019. It's 178 pages. It's got 13 chapters. And let me just give you a little flavor of what the chapters are entitled because that won't spoil the story, but maybe give you a little clue and a flavor. 
Arrival at the castle, a grand banquet, a robbery in the night, a hidden door, a chase in the dark, pandas in the kitchen, interrogations over waffles, all at sea, a rising tide, the trap is set, the trap is sprung, all is revealed, and then the epilogue. So if you can get your hands on it, it's well worth the read. Um, I hope you get a chance to do so and enjoy it. And next week we'll tune in again for a different book of a different type yet again. Thanks for listening. Keep reading. And uh, in the meantime, God bless. Thank you.